BX, UX, and CX, the three main lines, make up the entirety of Beyblade X so far, but what are they exactly? How do they differ? And most importantly, is one better than the others? Beyblade X has broken from all past traditions in the Beyblade series, discarding key features that made up all past generations and iterated some brand new concepts to the franchise. But with these brand new concepts, there has been a mass spread of confusion and frustration that has led some bladers into complete outrage and even more bladers into complete misunderstanding. But in today's video, we're going to be breaking down each line down to their skeletons to better understand the key differences between them so we can ascertain what each line is in the Beyblade X series and whether or not one is better or worse than the others. This is the complete guide to the Beyblade X lines. But before we continue on with this video, if you're wanting to get into Beyblade X and kickstart your career as a pro blader, head on over to MallofToys.com, sponsor of this channel. They have everything you need from stadiums and accessories, all the way to the Bay's drawn sword and all the way up to the latest releases of Beyblade X, including Hell's Reaper and Scorpio Spear. Just make sure you use code LESBIANBASE2 at checkout to knock off 5% off that total cost in the end. That is Mall of Toys. Dot com. BX, the main original line of Beyblade X. BX stands for the basic line, which, in all essence, makes complete sense. BX bays are the most basic of the bays in the fourth generation. However, by no means does that make it to be the weakest of the three main lines. The BX line carries some of the best bays to use in the game with Cobalt Dragoon, Phoenix Wing, Tyranno Beat, and even Shark Edge. BX bays are merely the most simplistic of the three lines, bearing no blade gimmicks outside their general shapes and angles. BX Bays primarily focus highly on central gravitational force and spin velocity of the Beyblade mechanics. With the added weight of the metal prong hooks, the weight becomes more centralized, allowing for them to be able to withstand a great deal of attacks while maintaining their spin. This central gravitational force design provides the BX line with a more sturdy build compared to the other two lines in Beyblade X. But what is central gravitational force? CGF is a phenomenon known in science as centripetal force, which is far different than centrifugal force formula. Centripetal force is an inward force that forces an object to spin and move in a circle around a given area. However, the two forces are equal in magnitude but act in opposite directions. Centripetal force base allows for the base to maintain their stability when an external force interrupts the motion of the bay. Now this centripetal force keeps the BX bays moving more towards the center of the stadium. Attack types in the BX line are more easily capable of landing direct extreme dashes. With the greater centripetal force in motion as part of Newton's second law of motion, the bays will have a greater chance of following the path of the extreme line in a straight shot versus shooting off to the side and potentially missing the target entirely. UX UX is the second line in the Beyblade X franchise. UX stands simply for unique line. The biggest change in the UX base is primarily the directional force of the CGF. With the metal prongs now replaced with a lighter resin material or even rubber, the weight distribution of the UX line is polar opposite to that of the BX line. UX distributes the weight of the base more outward with an increase of centrifugal force and a decrease in centripetal force. With just a slight change in weight distribution of the bay, the formula completely changes from centripetal force equals mass velocity squared over radius to centrifugal force, which is equal to the mass angular velocity squared times the radius. Much like a merry-go-round, the greater outer weight distribution forces the base to stay out of the center for longer. With this aspect in mind, the UX bays have a tendency of aiming to the side when performing an extreme dash, oftentimes missing the opponent's bays that are directly in the center. With the greater centrifugal force over the centripetal force, UX bays have a tendency of tipping over more frequently and getting more destabilized than the standard BX bay. However, UX bays have a tendency of being able to spin far longer with greater stamina. Aside from the change in the formula and the weight distribution of the bays, UX bays are capable of being able to add special and unique blade gimmicks to the blades themselves, unlike the BX line. 
However, there is a slight drawback to the ability of having blade gimmicks added to the blades. UX blades are less dense and more hollowed out in comparison to the near solid metal of the BX line. The hollow blades causes the metal to be slightly more fragile, which in turn causes the blades to break more frequently and sporadically. But not all is bad with the hollow and less dense blades. It also allows for the UX base to properly fit the gimmick within the blade while retaining the balanced weight class of Beyblade X, and in turn, maintain the balance that the fourth generation has held onto so tightly. In short, UX base have a different direction gravitational force that increases spin velocity and stamina in exchange for a decrease in the centripetal stability. But that leaves us now with the all new system in line, the CX line. CX. CX, otherwise in full, means custom line. Unlike the previous two lines, the CX line does not interfere or alter the physics of a bay, but rather instead brings a whole new aspect to the game, which is the customizable blades. CX bays feature three separate pieces that when connected and locked in together for the entirety of the blade. The weight distribution is similar to the UX line with greater centrifugal force over the centripetal force. However, CX bays, due to the means of how the blades are assembled, makes for the blades and the bays to be quite tall in comparison to the BX and UX line. This height change was not received well by the Beyblade community. Now, despite the mass dislike for the system, not all is bad with the CX Bays, as it is spread across the internet. CX Bays offer up an entire new way of approaching a battle. With the new Assist Blades, the key feature in the CX line, they alter a base performance quite significantly, requiring more in-depth strategies to make them work in battle. Now, by no means are they weak in comparison to the other two lines of Beyblade X. CX Bays are still in their infancy. With the requirements of having an assist blade attached to the CX Bays, customization became highly restricted, reverting back to how it was when Beyblade X was first released, with bays like Drawn Sword, Hell's Scythe, Wizard Arrow, and even Night Shield, the only bays at the time, so customization is extremely restricted. Now granted, we do have far more options in terms of ratchets and bits, but with only now, four current assist blades, with the fifth assist blade re releasing soon. The full strength of the CX line has yet to be revealed, but which line is better? What is the strongest of the three systems in Beyblade X? The answer? Simple. None. With Takara Tomi's eyes set on recognizing Beyblade as an official sporting event, the entire generation needs to be balanced out, meaning in all stock combo forums, no line is stronger than the other line. BX Bay should be able to contend with and beat UX Bay's. UX Bay should be able to contend and beat CX Bay's, focusing the art of being able to win in tournaments solely on the Blader's own strategies, as well as their own customization skills. One line cannot be more dominant than the other in stock combo form. Eliminating one line from being able to contend in official sanctioned tournament events will ultimately ruin Takeratomi's chances of being able to have Beyblade X as an official gear sport sporting event. Take football, basketball, ice hockey, and many other sports for example. As many different brands of footballs, basketballs, hockey pucks as there are, the main tool for the sport does not change. The weight, the size, and the structure of the main sporting tool remain the same universally. Without the structured rule set, these sports would almost be impossible to be able to play outside a small locally held game or tournament. Now by allowing players to have a wide selection and a wide variety of choices when blading is a major factor that makes Beyblade X the only generation capable of meeting the qualifications set by the International Sports Federation as well as the International Olympic Committee. Without the balance of the three lines so far released in Beyblade X, Gear Sports would not exist and Beyblade X would still be viewed once more as a children's household game. Now, in terms of which line is the best line in Beyblade X, scientifically, none are greater than the other. Each line focuses on a separate scientific and mathematical formula, taking away a key feature from one line and implementing a brand new feature in the next line. In the mathematical formula, all three lines in Beyblade X system are completely equal in magnitude and power, but this is where the mass confusion and frustration takes place. Too often have we seen commenters, bladers, and even baytubers compare bays such as Wizard Arc to Wizard Raw, disappointed that the latest release in the Wizard family was not able to outperform the previous. 
So how can CX be equal in power to UX if R cannot beat Rod consistently? The answer is once more simple, but we must dive into why bladers are having this mentality and the psychological thought process in of itself. This mentality, according to lead psychologist Albert Bandura, is called rumination or cognitive immobility. More than 60% of bladers that make up Beyblade X are converts from the third generation Beyblade Burst, with a little over 20% from the Metal Fight era, and the remaining an equal mix of new bladers and old bladers from the plastic generation. All past generations, most particularly Beyblade Burst, focused on highly on what is called evolution. Now taking a look back at the Beyblade Burst with Victory Valkyrie for example, each evolution of the Bay all the way to the final form became heavier, stronger, and more dominant than the last. Evolution is derived from the Latin root word of evolvera, which is defined as becoming more complex and developed. When objects, species, and anything that evolves, it is meant to become more developed and stronger than the previous form. God Valkyrie is meant to be stronger than Victory Valkyrie, Slash Valkyrie is meant to be stronger than God Valkyrie, so on and so forth, until Ultimate Valkyrie, which is meant to be the strongest of all the Valkyries. With the evolutionary chain, Ultimate Valkyrie will no matter what, be able to defeat all previous Valkyrie bays with relative ease. Variants are a complete different ballgame in comparison to evolutions. According to Oxford Dictionary, a variant is defined as a form or version of something that differs in some respect from other forms of the same thing or from a standard. Beyblade X strayed away from evolutions and kept to a more popular choice being that of variants. As defined above, variants in Beyblade X are similar bays but with different abilities, different skill sets, and more, yet at the same time, their generalized overall power level remains the same. Now each bay, whether it's drawn sword, drawn dagger, drawn buster, or even drawn brave, are all part of the drawn family. However, each is their own bay, each with their own special abilities designed to counter different sets of bays. Not one is stronger or more dominant than the other. However, some abilities do shine better and brighter than other abilities, but overall their generalized strengths are equal. In the anime itself, all characters showcase and use their older base for certain battles versus the previous generations where once they receive the new bay, the evolved form, the old bay disappears completely from the story, never to be seen or used again. Now many bladers have been most frustrated with the CX line, most particularly, primarily due to Wizard Arc. Most have expected Wizard Arc to be an evolved form of Wizard Rod and to be completely overpowered in comparison to Wizard Rod. However, reviewing the variancy, both Rod and Arc have two completely different skill sets. Rod's design was made for incredible endurance and enhanced stamina capabilities, meaning it is made to outspend any bay in the game with complete absorption of all oncoming attacks. Meanwhile, Wizard Arc is not designed in the same way. Now, Wizard Arc's blade is designed shares near polar opposite angles and ridges that make it less suitable to be a punching bag like Wizard Rod. Rather, these angles and ridges on the Arc blade are similar in design to the Wizard Arrow Bay. Arc's blade is meant for the parry and to deflect and slide, essentially the opponent's attack straight off the blade and cause it to lose control or hit the wall. Upgraded from the Wizard Arrow's Blade, Arc can deflect attacks from both low bays and high bays much more efficiently. However, when a direct attack is able to land on Arc, it is more than likely going to be wrung out or burst than Rod is. So let's recap everything we have learned here today and then determine whether or not one system is better than the others. First, we have learned that the BX functions off a mathematical formula and spin velocity known as centripetal force and inward gravitational force that allows for them to be sturdier, tip over less, and capable of enduring harder hits. They are the most basic of the base, featuring no gimmicks or abilities outside their own blade shapes and angles. Now UX bays are fueled by a different mathematical formula known as centrifugal force, polar opposite to centripetal force. With just a slight change in the weight distribution of the bay, UX bays can spin for longer than any of the other BX bays. However, the trade-off was the durability and the stability of the bays. Now UX stands for the unique line with bays equipped oftentimes with special blade gimmicks. With the CX line, we have learned that the mathematical formula used is identical to the UX line, maintaining greater centrifugal force over centripetal force. However, 
with the ability to change the blades up and generate a whole new set of combos and abilities never before seen in Beyblade X, completely shaking up the meta. But lastly, what we have learned today is that Beyblade X with all three lines are not evolutions, but rather variants. Each bay being a part of a family, and each bay being their own entity and their own bay entirely with separate gimmicks and abilities that differ than the others. This creates the ultimate balance for the fourth generation of Beyblade. There isn't a single best Beyblade X system, BX, UX, or CX. On the scientific terms and mathematical terms, all three systems and lines are equal in magnitude but with different variables. The choice depends on individual preference and what you're looking for in a Beyblade. UX is often praised for its unique gimmicks while BX offers good balance and power in design. CX is relatively new and still evolving with potential for exciting customization options. But comment down below which of the systems in Beyblade X is your favorite. Do you prefer the BX line, the UX line, or the all new CX line. Now that is everything for this video and I do appreciate you guys sticking around for another episode of Bay Education. I do hope that we have learned together through about two, two and a half weeks of research and development to be able to make this video. Now stay tuned. We do have more Beyblade X content coming to Les Spin Bays, including the all new Hell's Reaper complete set overview, as well as the new powerhouse and king of the meta, Scorpio Spear. Those videos will be out soon, so make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on the next epic video. Now, in the meantime, have yourselves a great morning, day, or night, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.